if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I love to use a bean bag. And this is one of the fairly recent ones that I've got. So I've got two different types. And today we're going to take a serious look at this big one. Now this smaller one is a Naturescapes. It's called a skimmer sack and it's worked pretty well, but it's primarily good for smaller lenses things in the neighborhood of a 100 to 400, you know, maybe the Tamron or the Sigma 150 to 600 or so. When you've got one of the big beast, like a 600 F4, a really big bean bag is really a benefit. And you can see that even with the 600 sitting on here, there's a good portion of the bean bag left on either side. It really cradles the lens. Now this bean bag was developed by a bird photographer known as Arthur Morris. Uh, most people call him Artie. Uh, that seems to be what he prefers to be called. Now Arthur and I have been friends for, you know, I don't know, maybe 25 years. I originally attended a number of his workshops back in early 2000, uh, maybe 2004, 2005, 2006 or so. I went on one workshop uh, around Florida with him. I went to another workshop where we, San Diego, and photographed the California Pelicans. And then I went to a third workshop with him where we went to Bosque del Apache and photographed the uh, Sandhill Cranes and uh, Snow Geese along with the landscapes. Now, Artie has been a photographer for many years. Uh, in his former life, he was a school teacher, but uh, he transitioned into photography, uh, I'd say maybe 30 years ago or so, and he has done very well for himself. He puts on workshops, he's written a couple of books, The Art of Bird Photography, and I think he's written another one, The Art of Bird Photography too. Uh, I think there's a couple other books that he's written, so he has done quite well. I have a lot of respect for Artie. Uh, one of his favorite phrases, at least while I was in his class, was point your shadow at the bird. In other words, have the sun behind you and the shadow going directly at the bird. That way, if the bird turns its beak to the left or to the right, you've still got a good sun angle on the bird. Now, I tend to like to have the sun off a little bit to the side, maybe five to 10 degrees, but I do understand his approach to how he likes to have the sun angle. And that's fine, everyone has a different style. Some folks will say that uh, his primary subject is a Boaz, B-O-A-S, a bird on a stick, and that has some truth to it. He does photograph a lot of birds and they happen to be on a stick or a branch or something like that. But he also does some mammals, some bears. Uh, he's done workshops up in Alaska and everything like that. So although he's primarily a bird photographer, he has done some mammals. Uh, just like I'm primarily a mammal photographer and I've done some birds. So let's get back to talking about the bean bag. So you can see the bean bag is fairly big. Uh, the top I would say is about five inches by roughly 10 inches or so. And you see it's got a good contour to it. And then it has two wings on the side that go over the side of your door frame and really hold on well. It has an opening zipper, which is wide enough to be able to access the inside and fill it up with your bean product. And then it has a couple of carrying handles on the bottom, which make it very convenient to go from point A to point B. Now, if you're gonna be flying with this, you don't wanna fly with it completely full because that's a lot of extra weight. You can pick up beans or rice or something like that at most any location and there's no need to pay the extra in order to travel with the full bean bag and it empties pretty easily. 
Now, Artie recommends using, I think, pinto beans. In mine, I've got sunflower seeds, and Artie recommends against sunflower seeds, and I understand his reasoning. If you get a mouse or some other type of animal inside your truck, it will chew a hole right through your bag, and that is not a good thing. Uh, the bags don't tend to hold the beans or the sunflower seeds if it has a hole in it. But I know I don't have any mice in my truck. I like having the sunflower seeds because that allows me to put some out on the ground and to attract a few birds nearby and things like that. Uh, also helps to attract squirrels and whatnot. So this particular bean bag I really like because it cradles the lens and provides a really firm support. It also has fabric on the bottom, which really grips the side of the door. So you can see, you can stick it on there. And after you flatten it down and things like that, it's not going anywhere. You can even drive down the road and it tends to hold its shape and to hold its body right here where you leave it. Now let's get back in and work with the 600 millimeter lens again. Now I've got a relatively cheap truck. Mine's a Chevy Colorado and my seats do not go up and down. Now if you had a more expensive car, you might have the seats that go up and down and you would be able to adjust things more than I can. But because my seats do not go up and down, I am limited to where my eyeball is. And putting the camera on here, it works very well to be able to see through the camera and not have any problem at all with the camera down just like this. Now, one thing I tend to like to do is to use a ground pod on top of my bean bag and then put my camera on top of here. And you can see when I do that, it raises it up pretty high, almost higher than I'm able to use the camera. Now, like I said, if I had a more expensive car with a raisable seat, I could adjust myself up and down. I find with the 600 millimeter mounted right flat down on the bag, it just doesn't move. It's just a very, very stable support. Now, Artie went through a number of renditions to make this particular bag. Uh, he has documented it uh, on his website. I think his website is birdsasart.com. And he puts out a, a newsletter and he puts out a blog type of thing. He sells products and stuff. And I bought this directly from Artie. And I'm very pleased with it. It was not cheap. I think it was $110, $120 or so with postage, but it's a comparable price to other bean bags. The skimmer sack, which you see right here that I've been using for maybe six or seven years is a similar price. I think I paid 60 or $70 for this. And because this bag sits down a little bit lower, I am able to use my ground pot on the skimmer sack. The disadvantage with the skimmer sack is when I put the 600 millimeter lens on here, it doesn't cradle the lens. And so I don't feel like it's quite as stable. You do not always have to use a bean bag on a door frame. You can also use the bean bag like up on the front hood. You can put it up on top of the truck. You can put it down on the ground and use that to help stabilize your camera. A bean bag has a lot of great uses. Another place a bean bag really comes into its own is if you go on safari in Africa and you can take your bean bag along and that allows you to shoot directly from the safari vehicle and to have a super stable support. So those are my thoughts. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Arthur Morris and the type of work that he does and his photography, I'll link his website down below in the show notes. So just go ahead and look down there. 
and you'll be able to see his photography and maybe shop at his store and read more about him. He's a very interesting person and an excellent photographer. That is our program for, on Moose Monday, and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you would, please give us that thumbs up icon or that old like a -roo, as I like to call it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing, and we'll see you back here again very soon on Moose Henderson Wildlife Photography. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Time to photograph that rabbit. Where's that rabbit? Where's that rabbit? Where's that rabbit? <laughs>